Hey guys, this is Camden and Morgan, and this is CHMS TV. Today we are talking about uh, the topic of summer Christmas. And I know that might sound weird because it's like, why do you do summer and Christmas? But I assure you, I think it's the best time to celebrate Christmas. Um, not that we're like gonna be high handing out gifts and doing a whole bunch of Christmas stuff, but that we can still celebrate the idea of Christmas in the summer. We can take some time to remember that there's still hope happening even during the summer even during this pandemic even during uh crazy things that are going on like this i mean this covid like crazy stuff but as we're reopening and there's a whole link of new things coming up uh it's just a great time to remember that there's still good stuff happening and it's important for us to focus in on that and not be so bombarded by negative things happening so uh here is our series for the summer summer christmas this is CHMS TV with Camden and Morgan. Hey guys, so we are talking about the topic of summer Christmas this summer, um, which I know is like super ironic, right? <laughs> I know, really ironic. Uh, but we want to talk about first, what are the things that have been like the hardest about COVID? That's such a great like opener question, things that we don't like to talk about maybe, um, things that I think we should talk about, right? Like. What are the things that have been the hardest part of COVID? And if I think about it first, so I'll answer since I asked the question, right? Um, one of the things that I found to be the hardest thing about COVID is probably just not being able to see my friends, not being in the same space as my friends. Um, I'm not like a super social person. Like I'm not like, oh my gosh, I have to spend all my time with people, but I want to be in the same space as people. And not getting to do that, honestly, is really hard. Like it, I mean, it's not like the end of the world hard, but it's difficult. Like it does make me um, feel, less feel less energetic, feel uh, less energy, feel um, tired more because I'm not, I'm not being fueled in some way. I'm not, I'm not getting something from uh, people around me or whenever I look on a screen. It's not the same as whenever I spend time with someone in person. So I would say that's probably been one of the hardest things for me personally, um, is not being able to spend personal time uh, with my friends and my family. Um, so Morgan, what about you? What's been the hardest thing for you? Uh, you clearly stole my answer because that's the answer I always give. Well, that is, that me. is my hardest thing. I'm just saying. So yours is the same? I mean, not quite, but close. Oh, well, Morgan's is the same, but not quite, but close. <laughs> so. There's your description of what that means. Apparently, I uh, can't talk for myself, no. so. Would you like to talk? Well, that would be nice since you asked the question to me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I would say I'm very much more people person than you are. Oh. I'm very extroverted. So, if you don't know me very well, uh, before COVID, I was the person that had school every day and then always had something planned after school so I could keep seeing people before I would then come home to another person. So I was constantly seeing people all the time. All of a sudden, I went from seeing all these people to seeing one person. It's him. Spoiler alert. Y'all, it was rough. Also, as I'm sure you all know, sometimes it's hard to be locked in the same space with just a few people or just one person for a couple months at a time. It, it, it led to some interesting uh, discussions, I'll put it that way. So I would say just being locked in, like I felt like I was trapped sometimes in our house, mm -hmm. which was really rough for me. Yeah. Uh, our cameraman, Jackson Edmiston, um, is behind you. Jackson, do you want to come over here and tell, <laughs> answer the question? <laughs> tell everyone what was what's the hardest thing for you about COVID? Hey guys, yeah, so I mean, honestly, probably pretty much the same thing. I was spending a lot of time with friends, hanging out before COVID, and then all of a sudden, can't do anything and even if I did like want to hang out with my friends still like what do you do you can't go anywhere right so I mean I, feel. I think that was definitely a big problem for everyone when yep. COVID hit yeah all right go back <laughs> he waves him off so rude it's the intern life I spent a lot of time doing an intern I don't feel that bad um anyways I'm totally joking guys just kidding um I don't treat him like that Uh, anyways, so as we're talking about COVID, the hardest thing I think for probably you 
is going to be the fact that like you didn't get to spend a lot of time with friends and as as i know that sounds like not like a huge deal you know oh no you can't spend time with friends i would say this like there is this sense of community that we need right like there's a sense of uh being with others and being in a space uh, around other people that is really required for us it's really something that really gives us life and really helps us um, just see the potential of being with others and helps us to gather and build us up and give us a, a new sense of energy um, and I think I think it feels at times because we can't spend time with people it can get really pressing it can get really hard it can make us really irritable it can make us really uh, frustrated and honestly it can make us really kind of just become negative mm -hmm. right and it it really kind of puts a down spiral on things and it makes us kind of frustrated our family it makes us you know angry whenever whenever our little siblings do one little thing that we ask them not to do and they do it anyways like the little things start to frustrate us and it's because we start to focus in on wow this really stinks mm -hmm. man i really don't like what's going on and i wish it all could change and i think what we need to focus on this summer is talking about hope we still need to talk about that there's still good things going on there are still great things that are happening it's not just everything is wrong everything is bad everything is you know depressing or hard but things are still good things are still great like things are still going well um, there are hard parts right there are things that are not easy but that doesn't mean that everything is bad that doesn't mean that everything is going wrong but rather it just means that some things right now are harder than they used to be and the thing that i think of the most whenever i think about this uh this idea of things are just difficult right now is actually from the book of john so john 1 4 through 5 really helps me sorry i got a nose itch <laughs> sorry you need to announce everything that you're doing yeah, I mean, it was really bad. Anyways, so, anyways, so we are talking about the book of John. And John opens up with this awesome description of Jesus. And he shows who he really is. And he says in verses 4 through 5, he says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. During this time when Jesus came to earth, there was a lot of oppression. There was a lot of hard things going on. There was stuff similar to, I would say, what's happening now. Like, there was a lot of uh, depression. There was a lot of frustration. There was a lot of hurt going around. And Jesus came in and people were expecting this one thing. They were expecting this king, but instead they got someone that was bringing the light. They were, they were expecting someone to come in and like, tear everything down like now we would expect someone to come in and just say everything's fine COVID is cured everything is finished um you can go and go about your normal life and everything will be just fine once again but instead what Jesus does is he, is he comes in and he presents a new light he presents a light that we need he presents a, a way of hope that we find and that's what we're talking about this this summer. We're talking about summer Christmas. We're talking about the hope that is amidst pain. We're talking about the hope that is amidst troubles and depression and frustration and anger. There is still hope in today. There's still things that are going on that are great. There's still things that are happening and you can still do good things during this season. You can still serve and bless and be with others it's just not like we used to see it and that's okay this is what we focus in on is that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it the thing for us to focus in on today is that just because we're in this COVID season does not mean that jesus has disappeared that does not mean that the hope has vanished it just means that it's harder to see for us because of everything that's clouding us. Everything that's around us makes it difficult for us to feel hopeful because we don't feel like we're in a hopeful season. But that's not the truth. That's not, that's not the truth that scripture shows and that's not the truth that's really available to us. 
but it's the thing that I think we can focus in on. Morgan, do you have something to kind of comment in with this? I, I guess the way I keep looking at it is like a lot of times when I'm feeling this way is I start to look at things that I'm grateful for, like things that are still happening that I'm appreciating even mm -hmm. when it's a dark time. So like for me, that could be, you know, a Zoom call with a friend that could be, um, I've been going for walks in the morning so that way I'm outside and not just trapped in my house all day. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I get to do that with some friends. So we're still trying to social distance well, but I'm still getting to see people that I care about while I'm taking care of myself and my body. Um, so I think even with everything, like God is showing me ways that he is helping me through all mm -hmm. of this struggle and all of this difficult time. Like he has overcome it. He has defeated it. Yeah. And so it's just me looking for the ways that I can see that. Yeah, no, I totally see that. This is a moment that we can focus in and see that God is still good. Jesus is still here and he is still present with us. And one of the things as we read through John 1 through 18, actually, I'm not gonna read it all like right here, um, but 1 through 18 is just so like uplifting. It, it helps us see who Jesus is and it helps affirm for us what he has done for us and it just tells us who he is what he's come to do and how he has come to save the world how he has made his dwelling with us he has um brought his glory down with us he has become flesh because he cared for us because he cares for us he not only cared for us in the past but he cares for us now and this whole series is all going to be focused on that hope is still found amidst this time. Hope is still present, and there are still things that we can do to bless the people around us, to serve the people around us, and to care for those that we love. It is still a time that we can continue to grow as a disciple of Jesus. It is still a time that we can continue to be an example as a Christian. It is still a time for these things. It has not ended, it has not be put on, been put on halt but rather it has given us an opportunity to still show hope and so this week this is this is your goal this is this is your challenge read the first part of john one it's not a hard goal it's an easy goal to start it's an easy goal to do it with your family with your friends just read john 1 through 18 take some time and read that passage and just see what does jesus represent what does he emulate in the in these words it talks about him becoming flesh he made his dwelling with us he is full of grace and truth he is the light in the darkness he is the one he is the word he he is described as many things and what he has come to do and it is a passage of uplifting and it is a passage that helps us see who Jesus is and what he came to do and that's where we need to start we need to start by recognizing who the Gospels say Jesus is and who he shows us to be and from there we go into okay so if this is still who he is then what do we do well we still serve we still bless we continue to act as if the, the world around us is not falling apart because the truth is it's not it feels like it because we don't get to spend time with our friends right it feels like it because we're trapped inside but the truth is is it's fine God is still in control the light has still overcome the darkness and this is simply a season this is not permanent this is not forever this is now and just because it's now doesn't make it bad might make it hard but it doesn't make it bad god is still good and we can still do life together so we're gonna we're gonna dive through this series throughout the summer and we're gonna talk about the hope that jesus brings and we're gonna continue to focus on that because it's important and it's and it's something that i think we have started to miss during this season and it's important for us to bring it back and see that it's still true so guys, there is your challenge for you to read through John 1 through 18, but I, and I want you to do it with your friends and family. I don't want you just to do it by yourself. I want you to read it with them and talk about it and say, what are the things that Jesus is representing? What are the things that tell us 
what are the words in here that tell us who Jesus is and what he has done, what he has shown us, and what he is? To clarify, he means chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, not chapters 1 through 18. Oh. Just want to make sure that that's on your plate. If you read 1 through 18, I'll, I'll be really impressed. I'm trying to make sure there's, there, you know, it'll be a lot. It'll be quite a bit. Yeah, most of the book. I mean, you could do it. You could. But yeah, just chapters. Chapter 1. Chapter, <laughs> chapter 1. <laughs> 1. Through 18. So take some time, read through that. Really simple challenge this week, um, but don't worry, it will not always be that simple. I know if you're really concerned and you're like, man, will it get harder? Probably. Probably. But I want to start off easy and want to give you a simple way to start being engaged with this. So uh, if we can, uh, we want to pray like we do every week. We want to take some time and pray over this and pray over these words and see, um, help us to just focus in on you and see how this is going to work in our lives. Um, so Morgan, would you be willing to take a second and just pray for us? Sure. That'd be great. God, I thank you so much for this day. I um, thank you that we can be here together. I pray that you would help us to see the hope and the light that you bring to the world. Help us to see that you are good even when we don't feel that the world around us is. Um, God, show us how we can still shine your light to other people how we can help bring hope to those that have none. Uh, be with us this week and help us to complete the challenge of reading John 1, 1 through 18. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Guys, we always appreciate being with you. And stay tuned for some really cool updates. But for now, this was CH. MS TV. That was CHMS TV with him in the morning. Stay tuned in next week for more. So guys, a couple quick announcements for you knowing what's coming up. Uh, because we're entering into phase four, we're actually gonna be shifting some of the middle school plans um, in a more exciting way, not like, a, oh, we're shifting towards something like a little less fun. Uh, we're actually moving towards uh, meeting more intentionally. So what that'll mean is starting not this week, but next week on Saturdays, we're going to start doing Bible, uh, the Bible study. We're going to call it Bible brunch. Continue that. We will be meeting on Saturdays um, from 1030 to noon, um, just before time for brunch. You know, if you want to bring some breakfast or something, but you know, right before lunch, because you know, lunch is really important too. But we'll be, can, we'll be starting to meet up at uh, my house for those, and I'll put more uh, info on that. But I want to let you know, we're going to start meeting in person for the Bible study, and we're going to start gathering more. We're going to make some more intentional spaces where we're not doing just virtual videos, but rather that we are actually getting together in person uh, because of some of the restrictions being lifted and some of the ways that we can actually start meeting as a church. Um, so I wanted to share that. I wanted you to know, like, that there's some exciting stuff moving forward and I want you to hear that um, it's not just going to be this all summer. It's not just going to be videos, but it's going to be a mix. It's going to be a mix of videos and actually meeting in person um, and doing some normal routines, um, things that we're missing, things that we're really wishing we could hear. You might even get to hear Jackson do some preaching. Yeah, hopefully. That'd be a exciting mm -hmm. times. He's excited. Very excited. He's excited. <laughs> He's excited. But we'll hopefully do some time for worship and possibly some games. Some ways to bring back normalcy um, amidst this strange time. So I wanted to share that with you. wanted you to know what's going on and hear from me that even during our series of Summer Christmas, it will not just be video. It will be uh, a mix of in-person and um, at home and different experiences that will help us to just bring a community back together. So wanted you to hear that. wanted you to know what's going on. I really appreciate you all. I don't have anything else. <laughs>